Hi, my name is Mike Dietz, and my talk is on assimilating disturbance towards real-time monitoring and forecasting. The current status quo in both carbon and disturbance monitoring is based predominantly on the idea of using satellite imagery to detect changes in land use and land cover. The implications of such changes for carbon budgets and other ecosystem surfaces are then usually handled through simple lookup tables. While this approach provides a useful first approximation, lookup tables don't capture the full complexity and heterogeneity of ecosystem processes. More recently, iterative data simulation approaches have begun to be employed for carbon monitoring. These approaches integrate over multiple sources of uncertainty, such as initial conditions, model drivers, and model parameters, in order to produce probabilistic carbon forecasts. We then statistically assimilate new observations, in this case, above ground biomass and LAI, uh, as they become available, producing a fusion product that combines multiple sources of information and reconciles them using the model's mechanistic understanding of processes. This figure shows an example site level assimilation where the forecast is in yellow, the data in red, and the data assimilation in green. Through data assimilation, we're able to not just constrain the pools we me measure, such as AGB, but also those that are partially observed, such as LAI, and those that are unobserved, such as soil carbon and fast time scale fluxes. The observed flux data shown here was used just for validation, not as part of the assimilation. We can scale all this up to produce spatial temporal maps of carbon pools and fluxes and validate pools we didn't assimilate, didn't assimilate such as soil carbon. Importantly, this bottom-up reanalysis provides a fully reconciled spatial temporal estimate of all carbon pools and fluxes which will help us better understand the variability in the carbon cycle. And this comes with full uncertainties and covariances across carbon pools, space, and time, which among other things make it particularly useful as a prior for top-down atmospheric inversions. In theory, data simulation should be great for monitoring disturbance because we want to update the model's forecast of disturbance risk with what actually happened. However, using conventional data simulation algorithms, the simulation estimate, shown here in orange, gets gradually nudged towards the observations, shown in red, missing the intensity of the disturbance and the associated disturbance fluxes. So for the remainder of this talk, I will outline a novel algorithm for assimilating disturbance, and then apply that algorithm in both, to both simulated and real-world data. The first thing we need to do is understand why conventional approaches, such as the ensemble Kalman filter, fail to capture disturbance. This figure shows a bimodal forecast in gray containing both undisturbed and disturbed ensemble members. Conventional data simulation approaches approximate forecasts using a normal distribution, which in this case fails to capture the disturbed cases entirely and inflates the variance of the undisturbed cases. Data simulation next uses Bayes' theorem to combine the forecast prior in green with the likelihood of the data in red, giving, giving the assimilation posterior in orange. While the assimilation does nudge the forecast towards the data, it ends up stranded in the middle, not representing either mode well. In our new assimilation algorithm, we represent the forecast as a mixture of normals, each weighted by the forecasted probability of being in that state. The assimilation then updates not just the mean and the variance of each mode, but the weight assigned to that mode, which is our posterior probability of disturbance. In this example, the observations in red are clearly indicative of a disturbed state, and so the posterior disturbance probability is close to 100%, allowing the assimilation to discreetly jump from one state to another without getting stranded in the no, man lands, no man's land in between. Mathematically, the algorithm is generalized to forecasts of multiple carbon pools simultaneously, summarized using a multivariate normal and k alternative disturbance types. Here, XL is our latent estimate of the forecast mean and covariance at time t for disturbance type k. The posterior probability of being in each state rho is represented using a multinomial distribution based on the forecast prior p. 
XL times rho then produces the weighted mixture of normals that is compared to the observations Y with observation air covariance matrix R. In practice, this model is currently being iteratively fit in JAGS at, at new each, as, new each yeah, as each new observation becomes available, while the process model forecasts are being run outside of JAGS. Applying this new multinomial assimilation to the example I showed before, we see in blue that the assimilation can now discreetly jump between undisturbed and disturbed states. The simulation also returns the posterior probability of disturbance, shown as the black line, which is 98% at the time of disturbance, while re remaining resilient to false positive events, such as those shown in time, time 12 and time 15. Even though these latter LAI observations are lower than the ones that triggered the discrete jump to the disturbed state, they are judged to be compatible with a forecasted recovery trajectory. To test our assimilation, we applied it to forecasts made using the very simple ecosystem model embedded in the Bayesian Tools R package for both simulated and real-world data. For applications to real-world data, this model is calibrated against annual AGB, LEI, and NEE data from the Metolius Ameriflux site USME2, a mature ponderosa and pine stand in Oregon. In our first simulated experiment, simulated data experiment, the left-hand panel shows that our algorithm was able to capture a disturbance that directly impacted both our leaf and wood carbon pools at the same time, followed by vegetation recovery and a slow loss of soil carbon. The right-hand panel shows the multivariate nature of the assimilation with a bimodal ensemble forecast in purple and observed data point consistent with the disturbance in the lower left of the figure and a posterior assimilation in green which is consistent with the disturbed state. The black arrows indicate how a sample of individual ensemble members jump from one state to another. In our second experiment, we introduced two alternative disturbances for the algorithm to select between. One is the defo defoliation that only re reduced leaf biomass, and the other as a removal that reduced both leaf and wood biomass. The simulation correctly ascribes the observations to the removal event. Our third experiment was similar to our second, but now the simulation captures a removal associated with a land cover change to a new plant functional type. In practice, that involves updating PFD assignments and thus parameter vectors on an ensemble member by ensemble member basis. Finally, in our fourth experiment, we ran a multi-site assimilation where disturbance occurs in one site, but not the other. This is significant because data simulation calculates not just the covariance across pools, but across sites. So conventional data simulation runs the risk of forecasting a biomass decline for undisturbed sites because of correlations with disturbed sites. That correlated decline does not occur in our algorithm. At the same time, contagious disturbances that are spatially correlated within the forecast ensemble members, such as fire, pests, and land use, are able to leverage that covariance to increase the odds of detecting disturbance at one site based on observing disturbance at another. Knowing that the underlying algorithms perform well, we next moved up on to assimilating real data, in this case, the land trender above ground biomass product for a landscape centered on the Oregon Cascades, which is shown in the bottom right. Specifically, we sampled around 400 locations from within the evergreen forest land cover class shown in dark green in the top left, stratifying that sample by disturbance type shown in the bottom left, where green indicates pests, pink fire, blue clear cuts, dark red other disturbances, and gray for undisturbed forest. Our preliminary results with real world data show that the assimilation often had issues with filter divergence as shown in the left-hand panel, which is when the forecast model becomes overconfident in itself and stops following the data. Uh, this has nothing to do with our new algorithm specifically, as this happens in conventional data simulation as well, when there's an imbalance between observation error and model error. It is likely occurring because we are not currently propagating all sources of model uncertainty in our forecasts. That said, in the right-hand panel, we do see that the amount of divergence var varies as a function of both disturbance type and magnitude, with fires being easier to detect. As a proof of concept, we ran a range of experiments where we varied the model and observation errors 
after which our algorithm was highly successful at detecting disturbances that were bigger than around half a kilogram of carbon per meter squared. And algorithm performance did not vary significantly by disturbance type. It's also worth noting that we do not yet account for errors in the disturbance product itself, so we don't know for sure if some of these small or negative disturbances represent errors in the above ground biomass product, errors in the disturbance product, or simply the disturbance itself didn't have a large enough effect on AGV to be detected. Extending the real world assimilation to multiple data constraints is an obvious future direction. More broadly, as part of our current NASA carbon monitoring project, we will be integrating these improved disturbance algorithms into the system we're using for continental scale data carbon data simulation, as indicated by task two in pink. At the same time, in task one shown in blue, we will be integrating this continental carbon reanalysis with another project we have that is producing real-time carbon yeah. forecasts at the site scale in order to produce harmonized carbon and disturbance monitoring, as well as seasonal forecast products, all at a disturbance scale, uh, at, all at a continental scale. Finally, task three, shown in green, is to extend this assimilation to a wider range of data, bringing in LIDAR, microwave, thermal, and fluorescence remote sensing data as constraints. We are also using the same disturbance assimilation approach, approach presented here in another project to develop forest pest forecasts for New England. Thanks.